Hi there, I'm Anthony Chung and I'm the Head of Market Analysis here at Amplify Trading. Every weekday morning I'll deliver a fundamental rundown ahead of the European Open. But if you subscribe to the channel, you'll also get content from the rest of the team. So, let's begin. Okay, good morning guys. And let's take a look at the markets this morning at the European Open Tuesday the 15th of September. And it was a relatively quiet day yesterday. All three of the major US indices finishing uh, positive, just over 1% and continue to claw back then some of the selling pressure that had been seen in prior week gone by uh, as the, the general sense seems to be a lot of the press and market kind of talking heads about the, the kind of healthy nature of a bit of a correction in what otherwise was a fairly one-dimensional rise that we were seeing in markets at the time. Talked about a little bit of normalization in the options market as well yesterday um, a lot of people saying then that helps the kind of breadth of then the buying that can recommence um, given the kind of shakeout that we've had of the stretch positioning um, before that sell-off so overall there's nothing really too new to mention on that front I'd say when I'm looking at the major US indices uh, this morning uh, we continue to remain on the front foot the Nasdaq futures up about 60 the s and is up about 20 or 15 at the moment uh, coming in the case of the S&P in close proximity to uh, the R1 level worth keeping an eye on that does mark around yesterday afternoon's high uh, we've got at 92 and a half and 95 and a quarter being the R1 uh, any further push above there today then would be looking at the broader range that we've been trading over the last three or four sessions which would be up at 3414 uh, on a continuation of this move uh, similarly with the Nasdaq just coming up to close proximity to that high as well from yesterday and you can see near-term price activity bit of a double top uh, if I just put an ellipse through where we were trading at the back end of last week and then in yesterday's session here at 11.349 so trading just around uh, 25 points or so away from that at the moment so Generally, positive close on Wall Street, a little bit mixed overnight in Asia. Uh, some Chinese data helping bolstering uh, likes of the Hang Seng, though, uh, in Hong Kong. And I'll get into that data in a moment. But otherwise, elsewhere, some general risk appetite. The dollar then weakening in the overnight session. Uh, the Dixie's down about two tenths of 1%, so consequently helping support Euro dollar, which has managed to get its head just above what was the high point from yesterday and you can see here finding a bit of a, a platform now to support price you've got a combination of the R1 with that high from yesterday and this kind of price breakout that you can see here was when we saw that very soft reference to the euro uh, no explicit talking down or jaw boning of the euro from ECB's Christine Lagarde last week so those highs now are with insight a lot of people were of that mindset um, the general kind of nature of the ECB being a little bit behind the curve in terms of their policy adoption following the Fed's move to AIT, opening up the prospect then of potentially a euro move back up in towards those 120 areas, which has been a catalyst then for them to start kind of voicing concern about the strength of the euro. So kind of continue that grind back up towards those levels and a pretty decent um, area here then from a technical point of view at least, to provide perhaps a little bit of support for uh, if all things remain equal as they are at the moment, a continuation of the push up and I would be targeting up and around the R2 which does coincide then with around that laggard high which was around 119.40 looking at the euro futures here. Uh, euro is up about 26 pips but cable is flat as you can see here in the center top chart um, hugging around its pivot level at the moment on the up on the north side of that level um, but there's obviously some brexit news i can update you on with the passage of the internal market bill last night what the next steps are and what does it mean and so on i'll get into in a moment uh, in crude not too much movement um, pretty restricted i'd say in its overall price yesterday and it's just sitting around consolidation of its pivot level in the futures at the moment uh, this despite then hurricane sally still being uh, in observation at the moment uh, and then the fixed income markets were pretty flat at the moment. Uh, no real movement seen in the overnight Asia Pacific session after we did see a bit of a bump up in prices through the, the US session yesterday. So let me get into some of the headlines then. And I'm going to start off with talking about what's dominating quite a lot of the UK press coverage this morning. And that is, of course, the House of Commons passed their internal market bill pretty late last night. I think it was 
I was looking at the results coming out, must have been about half ten at night. Feels like we're back in that Brexit, Theresa May era again. Um, the internal market bill passed by 340 to 263 in its first main vote, allowing it, allowing it to now go through until the next stages in the parliamentary process starting from today. Um, only two Tories voted against him for now, others abstained. Of the abstained names of significance, uh, former Chancellor Siji Javid, former Attorney General Geoffrey Cox and Jeremy Wright were part of the absten uh, abstentions. Or abstained, I should say. Uh, now the bill passes to its second reading. Uh, it will face four more days, basically, of debate on its fine print, uh, a stage in which lawmakers can try to insert revisions that could change the entire meaning of the bill or even kill it if it got as far as that. So if you remember lots of the other procedural votes that we had uh, going through uh, particularly 2019 uh, even 2018 to do with Brexit it's not just one vote and that's it it basically goes through a number of votes the government puts it through first normally what happened last night and the reason why reaction in market was so tame is that that was very much expected to go through with relative ease given the size of the Tory majority it's now about the revisions part it gets a little bit more complicated and then it gets even more complicated then uh, when it starts going down into the next levels where Johnson faces much bigger hurdles when it goes up into the House of Lords from the Commons should it then go through this revision process where Tory grandees including the former leader Michael Howard has denounced the legislation and could delay then its progress further. So it's not so much of a definitive thing, one and done. Um, it's going to be dragged out throughout the rest of the week. I guess we'll know a little bit better where the land lies by the time we get to Friday, perhaps. Uh, but even then, it's probably like going to spill over into next week. So it's not gone away. The one thing I would say is that it's not really a market-sensitive thing right now for sterling currency for trading FX. Um, however, if this does turn into a very protracted period of time to go through the various hoops and hurdles here, um, which it normally does take some time, then all that's kind of eating into the negotiation time with the EU because as, as long as they're pursuing and talking about this internal market bill as though although Johnson's talking about this as an insurance policy which he'd rather not use he'd rather do a deal with Europe and all the meanwhile Europe are just going to sit on the sidelines they can't really do anything until you know UK sorts its house out uh, first of all so that of course is quite sensitive because we've only got I mean it's a month to the day really when there's the tentative kind of soft deadlines that a uh, a deal of some sort needs to be concluded essentially so it can be ratified across Europe in time for the transition expiration at the end of the year so um, I don't think it will be too much of a concern right now but maybe perhaps as we get towards the end of the week as these individual votes start coming through how much um, revisions does it go through the more there is the longer it's going to take and then how how much can the, the House of Lords delay proceedings even further? You know, all of this is going to just heap more pressure on uh, the diminishing timeline that is to cut the deal with only four weeks left really to go. Don't get me wrong, we've seen this many times before. Uh, obviously, this soft deadline can be moved further out. But if we do get to that type of territory, all the more reason it's probably going to add a negative kind of headwind or weight to, to sterling going forward over the coming weeks. So that was the latest on that side. Um, but overall, in in Asia, probably worse warrant, uh, warrants me uh, mentioning that Chinese retail sales uh, last night came in the first time that they were positive or saw growth um, for 2020. Um, Chinese retail sales came in at 0.5% year on year. That was against expectations of basically flat. Industrial production came in at 5.6% year on year against expected 5.1%. Uh, these were both for the month of August, so exceeded expectations. Industrial output rebounding due to fiscal stimulus and surprisingly strong uh, exports. Um, as I said overnight, that did support some of the, the local indices. Hang Seng was higher, uh, but also it's worth noting that the Aussie dollar uh, was a little bit firmer. So a little bit of a crossover. Uh, generally, the Aussie acting as a, as a proxy for economic health in China, so that data no doubt probably would have helped. But also from Australia, you had the RBA minutes, and where the Australian central bank said the appreciation of the currency was consistent with higher commodity prices, particularly iron ore, 
um, and they said that there was no, or effectively the, from the minutes, there was no sign of additional policy moves were imminent. So no addition or no indication that additional monetary measures are imminent uh, in, in itself then is just not feeding into this overall dovish narrative that markets have been so comfortable with uh, over this kind of recovery of pandemic era that we're in. So that in itself uh, being translated into a more hawkish reaction in combination with the Chinese data. So the Aussie's a little bit firmer this morning. Uh, we're trading up about 34 pips and we're above the R2 in the futures at least for the Aussie this morning uh, on the back of these various different developments. Um, just going back to the, the China front, obviously these data sets have been um, pretty decent and as you can see here it just kind of further confirms uh, an economic recovery that's taking place in China as their economy continues to start to further reopen uh, and, and become more back to where we were back at the beginning of the year prior to the entire situation starting to unfold. Um, a couple of other things to be aware of though and this was one headline and this is an update on the US-China kind of trade situation. Uh, the Trump administration on Monday shelved plans for a broad import ban on cotton and tomato products from China's Xinjiang region while announcing narrower bans on products from five specific entities. Um, two people familiar with the Trump administration's internal deliberations said that concerns about the broad orders and their effect on supply chains were raised by officials. Uh, China has also agreed to buy increased quantities of US cotton under the phase one of the pre-agreed uh, trade deal and that could be put at risk by US ban on imports. Uh, so if you think about what's happened, a couple of things here, three things really. You've got improving economic data happening domestically in China. You've got a little bit of reversal from the White House on the potential broad import ban on cotton from a certain area in China. And also some hopes of improved relations between Beijing and Washington following signs of a deal on the future for the Chinese app TikTok as well, which we've seen with Microsoft and Oracle kind of fighting over that. So all of this has led to the Chinese currency hitting its highest level in more than a year uh, overnight. Uh, and worth keeping in mind then, obviously we, we do monitor the kind of the tension between those two nations as a definable kind of um, sentiment gauge overall as one of the biggest macro risks generally on a day-to-day -day basis. And at the moment, um, things are, are relatively, I wouldn't say positive, but just not negative. Uh, if that makes sense. And that's probably what's helping a little bit of this just ability through a, a lack of other fundamental catalysts for equity markets just to kind of revert back to course uh, following that correction that we've seen of late. Um, final things to mention, AstraZeneca, um, they have come out and basically said their COVID-19 vaccine um, trial remains on hold at least till next week in the US. Um, as regulators examine the serious side effects suffered by a patient in the UK, which we know of. Um, now, I don't think this is particularly that important. Um, all it's basically saying is that in the US, while their uh, regulators examine this, the side effects, this is on hold till the middle of the week. So it's not exactly a super long delay, I don't think. Um, and I think market prices really tell you what you need to know uh, in terms of any... Um, reaction in their price in aftermarket, uh, none really, and also in terms of the way stock futures are reacting. Uh, I think the, the world's moved on now from where we were in the middle of last week when we saw that initial dip on the actual breaking of the news. So a further delay of a couple of days I don't think really moves the needle that much in terms of market expectations about the overall outcome of these stage three clinical trials. Um, and then the final thing was Hurricane Sally. Um, Shell, Chevron, Murphy Oil and other producers have begun shutting in some US uh, Gulf offshore crude and natural, natural gas output while at least one refinery temporarily closed its plant ahead of Hurricane Sally. It's expected to make landfall on the Mississippi-Alabama border uh, late today, early tomorrow. Uh, federal regulators said of, as of yesterday that 21.4% of the Gulf's oil production was now shut in thus far with around 25.3% of natural gas has been stopped uh, at this pres uh, present point in time, just given the extremely dangerous and life-threatening storm surge that is expected. However, I would, I would note that the NHC did update about 15 minutes ago from me starting this recording, and they did report that Hurricane Sally had slightly weakened um, 
hurricane force winds and flash flooding though likely along portions of the northern gulf coast later uh, oil in itself uh, again with this type of thing i mean we're right in the, the kind of the hotspot area now as you can see from these graphics and the fact that oil is fairly um comfortable with the situation i think really says it all so uh, obviously these weather patterns can be quite erratic can change quite quickly so it's definitely worth being vigilant and monitoring but at this point i don't really see too much um, of, a, of a real big reaction today necessarily happening in WTI crude that's really going to kick off oil prices. Okay, and then uh, just a quick look at the calendar. What else have we got today? Um, we've just had the UK data out, um, the kind of average earnings and the ILO unemployment rate. Um, in terms of the uh, average earnings numbers, uh, X bonus 0.2% versus expected minus 0.2%. Uh, the ILO unemployment rate 4.1 in line with expectations of 4.1. Um, so, if anything, perhaps a touch higher on the, on the earnings side, but overall very muted impact seen in, in the British pound. I think that's to be expected from this type of economic data. Anything pertaining to jobs and pay, I think really um, markets will be a little bit tentative of drawing too many conclusions ahead of what is such a critical period, which is October, when we're going to see potentially another wave of people being laid off, given the expiration of the furlough scheme at the moment, adopted by the UK government. So I don't think that that data uh, is too much to look at. Um, I think more so what's happened overnight, if you look at the currency markets, is the dollar uh, has resumed quite an aggressive downward trend. And we've actually broken the low of yesterday in the Dixie. We trade at 92.80 or so at the moment. So we're down around a quarter percent in the dollar. And I'd say that's just generally buoying uh, those major pairs. And euro dollar obviously outperforming a little bit because of the additional headwind that sterling is receiving from the, the ongoing Brexit headlines. Um, otherwise, moving on, uh, you get the German ZEW numbers coming out uh, at 10 o'clock. Um, expected to remain relatively steady for the month of September from where we're in August. Uh, so ZEW being the measurement of analysts and economists' expectation about the current and six-month outlook for the German economy. Can't really say there's too much really difference between what they're going to have heard or seen in August to what we've had in September going off the general macroeconomic environment at the moment. Uh, so I wouldn't look for too much reaction out of that. Uh, then we go into the afternoon and a couple of interesting US uh, metrics coming out. The you know, Empire Manufacturing from the States for September. Uh, you've got US Industrial production, cap utilization, manufacturing production, import price index. So a couple of, uh, of interesting data points coming out, 1.30 and 2.15 uh, London time. Okay, well, that, that is it. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, myself and the team will be covering the FOMC in full live tomorrow night. All you got to do is subscribe, hit that bell icon, and you'll be notified as soon as we begin. Uh, otherwise, look, have a great day. Any questions, just drop a comment. Happy to help. Okay, guys, take care.